we're going to take a look at creating reports in Oracle Application Express. This is the beginner video, so we're just going to go through some of the real basic ways of creating reports. In the intermediate video, we'll take a look at some of the advanced features, uh, building reports based off web services and some of those exciting things. And then in the advanced video for reports, we'll take a look at doing some really sophisticated things, uh, making your reports as interactive as possible. So if you've been following my other videos, you know uh, I've created a couple of videos already on setting up an application, logging into Oracle Application Express. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time uh, doing that in this particular video. I'm going to hop right in. I'm going to hop in the Application Builder here. And let me just re-log in since I hit my timeout here and it logged me out. So I'm going to go into Application Builder here. And I have the option of either putting a report on an existing page or creating a new page for the report. Just to make things simple, I'm going to go in. Here's my application video demo. So I'm going to create a, a brand new page. Uh, like I said, I could go into one of the other pages that I've created already and put a report on it, but I'm just going to go through and create a new page. So when I go to create a new page, by default, Oracle Application Express asks me for the type of region that I'm going to have on the page. And I could create a blank page and then go back and create a report later on, but I'm obviously going to create a report here. And you can see these are the basic options that I have. I can use the wizard, and we'll look at that in the intermediate video and the report on a web service result. Same thing, probably either intermediate or the advanced videos on uh, creating reports. This video is going to focus on these two guys, the interactive report and the classic report. In older versions of Oracle Application Express, uh, you could create what was called a, a classic report. They just called it a report in Apex 3 and earlier versions. And then there was a button on the report after you've created it that would say convert this into an interactive report. That option doesn't exist in Apex 4. We don't have the ability to convert a classic report into an interactive report. And you can see that Oracle has kind of rearranged these where classic report isn't kind of the first option anymore. Interactive report is the, the first option. The classic report has kind of moved into the second position here. So what Oracle is steering people towards is, is creating these interactive reports. And an interactive report is just a, a report that gives the user an incredible amount of flexibility in terms of changing the sort criteria or a whole bunch of other stuff as part of the report. And that's probably going to be your, your main way of creating reports uh, in Application Express. But I'm going to start off with a classic report here. And then we'll go back and then we'll create an interactive report. And you can see all the really cool features uh, that are built into an interactive report. So I'm going to click on classic report here. You can see uh, page number six. I'll call this, uh, I'll give the page name of uh, uh, department. DDP R E P T S department reports. Uh, do I want to use tabs or anything like that? No, I don't want to use tabs. So I can either use uh, Query Builder or if I have a SQL select statement or a PL SQL function that returns a SQL select statement, I can do either one of those. I'm going to use Query Builder here just because I'm lazy and I don't feel like remembering all the different column names. And I'm going to go into Department, select that. And I want to see all three things on my report, department number, department name, and location. Real simple, right? Nothing fancy. If I run this, it'll run and it'll give me quick little results to show me what my report's going to look like. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm going to return that. You can see it creates a select statement for me. I'm not limited to just the select statement. I can go in here and change this around. I can add where clauses. I can do all these really cool things. For now, I'm just going to leave it here like this. That looks good to me. Click on next. I can set up templates. What, uh, what type of template do I want to use when I'm displaying this report? Uh, the region name, you know, let me change this to something like, I'll call it Department Report Classic. Where do I want the report to show up in terms of column? How many rows per page? You know, let me shrink this down to, you know, five rows per page. Why not? No break columns. I'll just leave that all the same. Do I want to give the user the ability to have CSV output? Sure, why not? I'll put yes, but I'll leave everything else no for now. Click on next. 
link must be specified. So I'll say um, uh, down DL download to Excel. Next, got the summary screen here. Does everything look okay? Click on finish. Do I want to run the page or I want to edit the page? Let's take a look and run the page. Real simple stuff, right? Department report classic, nothing fancy here. I don't have any way to resort the information. This is a real static report. I can download to Excel. So I click on the link here, opens up this window for me. I say yes. Operating system recognizes it's a CSV file, so it opens up Excel for me. Let me resize this so it fits on my window here, and you can see it's output the information for me. Real simple way of going through and creating a real simple report on a page. So edit page six. And now I'm going to add another type of report to this page. So here in my region section, I already have my department report classic, and it's a type of report. So I click on the little plus thing here. It says I want to create a new region. What do I want to do? I want to create a report. But instead of creating classic report, this time I'm going to create an interactive report. An interactive report is just like a classic report, but it has so many really cool features. And what we're going to see is we have the ability to let the users set up the information the way they want to on the report, Turn, take the burden of programming responsibility off you, the developer, give it to the end users, let them set up the report the way they want to see it exactly, they can save the report in their format, and every time they log in and run the web page, they see the report in their format. Again, it lets them customize. It takes all the work off you as a developer. So I'm going to call this one Department Report, and so the classic, I'm going to call it INT for interactive. SQL statement, again, I click on Query Builder, brings up the same window. I want to do Department. Bing, bang, boom. Whoops. Coming. There we go. Click on return. Creates a select statement for me. Uh, I can have this link to a single row view available for me if I want to do that. No, I don't want to do that. I'm going to click on next. I can set up condition types for when this particular region gets displayed. Uh, I can set up all of these different things. I can set up an authorization scheme just for this particular region. I can uh, make the page a uh, public page and I can say there's no security check required or if I make it a public page if the user hasn't logged in I can say so that they're not a public user I'm gonna hide that particular region. I'll just let it go and create region. So now if we run this page we have the two regions. We have the department report classic and then we have the second report that's down here. This is my interactive report, and I have a whole bunch more functionality that I can do with it, right? If I click on any of the column headers, like location, I get this other thing that says, okay, maybe I want to filter a certain piece of information. I just want to see Chicago or Dallas. I can select any of the values there and limit the information. I can change how it's sorted. Sorted low to high, high to low. It sorts all this information for me. I also have the ability to go in there and... I can completely hide the column if I don't want to see that column uh, on my report. I can go in here and set up control breaks. We don't have anything, unfortunately, that would be a good control break in this particular report. We don't have any repeating values. But I can set up control breaks in here to say, okay, I want to break on uh, each one of the values here. So you can see I get this control break for uh, New York, Dallas, Chicago, Boston. Uh, I can get rid of that control break just by clicking the X there again. I also have this thing here called actions along the tops where I can select the columns that I want to see. I can apply filters. I can change the number of rows per page. I can see what types of formatting features. I can even create computational fields if I want to, aggregate fields. Uh, I can create a chart. I can do group buys. I can do all of these really cool things. And once I change everything around, let's go in here. Let's say I want to do. Uh, well, five rows per page isn't going to help us, unfortunately. But let's go in here and say I want to create a little chart that goes along with this. Let's say I want to do uh, department number. Value will be the department number. It doesn't really make sense, but I'll put it in there anyway. And we'll do a count. Uh, let's see. Let's do this type of chart. I say apply. 
creates the chart for me automatically. We have one person, or there's one entry, uh, obviously for each region there, so they're all uh, to one. So this this chart doesn't really make a lot of sense, but I can give the users the ability to go in there and do all of those different things, as opposed to having to do the programmatically for uh, each individual user that's out there. So if I click on this button back here, it takes me back to the report. So let's say I've done all of these different things that are part of a report. I can save it inside my format, right? So I can save it as the primary default report type that everybody will see when they pull up this particular page and it's got this report on it. Or I can give it a name. I'll give this name of Chris Demo and apply. So now I can go back to the original way the report was set up or any type of changes that I make and I save it in the exact format that I want, I can pull it up as Chris Demo. In this particular case, it's the exact same thing. Uh, but <clears throat> I could certainly change any of these things around. Actually, it's not the same thing, is it? Uh, the primary report, oh yeah, it is the primary report, it has a uh, location as descending. That's the way it was in there. So Chris Demo has location as descending also. But I can change any of these different pieces around and then save the report off. So interactive reports really give us a tremendous amount of flexibility in terms of um, setting up reports, giving the end users the ability to go in there and number one, customize the data exactly the way they want it. And let's face it, the users are gonna know the data and the data that they're interested in better than you ever will as a developer. And it gives them the ability to save off the types of reports. So the next time that they log into a particular page, they don't have to go through and say, well, I wanna change this column, I wanna sort by this, I wanna have a control break here. They can save all of that information, pull up the report instantaneously, have different flavors of that report based on the different criteria uh, that are out there. And it takes the burden off you as a developer and it puts it on the end user. So they're more interactive, they're more engaged with the type of applications that you create in Application Express. It's really a win-win all the way around.